Dallas station, but it's also the Houston area. So I've traveled around a lot and done a lot of funny different places. Uh, in fact, I've fought in all but three of the kingdoms. Uh, 38 states. So anyway, the point is the traveling experience fight. Um, I tend to try and take a little more scientific approach. I'm a PhD student at Texas A&M, so science is second nature to me the way I function, the way I think. So I try to be fairly analytical in my fighting style. I believe that's a benefit. Uh, I'm Slagar. I live out of uh, Chicago. I've competed in Amphgar, Belagar, Thag here in SCA pretty extensively. Wisconsin, Chicago, and Florida. And I've sort of worked with the groups in each place. I've won kingdom level SEA tournaments, kingdom level Belagard stuff. My Avgard performance is haven't been to enough tournaments. Stick, stick level a little bit higher in that game, so I'm still working on it. I've been a lefty since 2006. I've been a Everything sort of. Um, the structure of the course, first of all, feel free to ask questions. Um, I don't assume, I'm not going to ask ever if you have questions, because I assume you always have questions. I was asking which questions you have, because right? you're supposed to have questions. I assume you'd be thinking, hard playing. Feel free to ask questions. There are no dumb questions in this class. There are dumb questions, but you really have to work out to get a dumb question. And if you get a dumb question, I'll let you know fully. Um, but you really have to work at that. So, things we'll look at. We'll get some stylistic cons considerations of the different styles. Uh, then we'll look at stances and the different styles I'm talking about are single sword, or you do uh, dag and bell people, single blue. Um, Florentine, sword and board, which typically for me means medium round and a short sword, but you can tie it up with pretty much other styles too. Most of the stuff translates over. Um, talk about some limitations equipment can cause for that. Um, then we will look at uh, down spear. Which, which is a style that gets a lot more play in amp card than it does in Bell and Dag. Uh, and we'll talk very briefly about pull arms. Um, talk a couple theoretical concepts, the cone of defense, movement, range, control, planning. Um, and then we'll talk about actual shots. What I consider the fundamental four, um, what I think that is fundamental four is not, these are the four core shots everything's built off of. These are really the, fir the four first shots most left use are. Right? The first tools in your toolbox. Um, and it's like our has different, um, you have a different, you know, because you're from the Peter School, so you've got your fundamental shots that you build off of. And he'll talk about that as well. Um, and then we'll expand it out to other basic shots. Um, talk about some combinations, uh, body movements, sword feints, that sort of thing. And then we'll just kind of break it down, take questions, go over stuff, um, and work on things. One thing we're short on is dumb righties to hit. Um, so, we've got one volunteer. Excellent. <laughs> so, yeah, so what we'll be doing is we'll switch around. I did not bring my ready shield. But I will be faking a righty too to help you guys practice, um, and so we'll work through some shots as well. It's not just me talking to you about stuff. I got some. Yeah, I also got a righty. But to start with, I'm going to talk about stuff. Um, do you have anyone to add at that point? Um, for the, those of you who are not familiar, SQBC does kind of a, a lead instructor, co-instructor thing. So he's not talking because he has nothing to say. He's not talking because I'm the lead. And I'm supposed to do most of the talking, and also I didn't give him the syllabus until recently. <laughs> So, um, single sword is our starting point. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Uh, and um, actually, before we go any further, we found people's names, which I will not remember, but I'll make an effort. And then your fighting experience. How many years in playing? If you play after how many years of war you have, etc. So let's start with you. I'm Flair. I started back in 2007, played casually in college, never any formal competition or anything like that. And I've been on hiatus for several years, so treat me like a dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm no, fair. What, where at? Uh, Clemson, with Tiger Knights. We weren't officially registered, but we did start a group there. Uh, I'm Ferrix. I've been playing Bell for five years. This is my second year in Amp Guard, and I'm from St. Louis. I'm Nula. I'm from uh, Neverwinter. Uh, I played briefly in like 99, 2000. Uh, I've been back extensively since 2009, primarily Amp Guard. Wilhelm, I started in uh, Nacogdoches, Texas in the Wetlands in 96. Uh, so it's like my 20th year. Uh, so I do a little bit of Bell, not lately. Uh, so playing in Talbot Gore. Alana, I've been in Amcard for about one and a half years from Wichita Falls, which is Emerald Hills, and I have two warriors. 
Uh, Anvil, I've been fighting mainly DAG. I've been fighting for about nine months with interest in others. My first AMP card event, technically. Came here to kind of learn to bring in things to DAG. Okay. Um, so, with that in mind, so you've got a various range of experience here from pretty darn new to pretty darn experienced. So, if I skip over something, right? that you're not familiar with, like, I'm like, all right, and I get your guard, and you're like, well, I need help with my guard. You're like, hey, I need help with my guard. Um, because one, it doesn't do you any good if you don't have a fundamental down, and I try to see it builds off of that. And two, everybody can generally benefit from a refresher course. Right? I'm not going to necessarily cover a lot of stuff as a refresher for people, because that's a different class, but it doesn't hurt the rest of the class just to take time to help you get up to speed. Even warlords occasionally need to go and, oh, my foot placement's really drifted out of position. I need to work on it. Right? It happens to everybody, so those re refreshes are pretty good. So, single sword stance. Um, there's several schools of thought. All of them are wrong except mine. <laughs> um, your stance, your feet, should be about a shoulder width apart, a little bit wider. Um, your front foot should be pointed at the bad guy, so you're my bad guy. Front foot's pointing you. And the reason for that is your body tends to move in the direction your foot's pointed. Also reduces the strain on your knee. If I'm going to come forward, because generally I'm going to come forward to attack, right? I want to come this way. If it's this way, I put a lot of lateral stress on my knee. Um, especially for women, you're at four to six times the rate of ACL injuries with men. So okay. careful those knees. Um, so my other foot, um, I did a lot of fencing in college, so I've got a little bit of a bad habit. I tend to be fairly linear in my stance. Um, generally, a little bit off center is a little bit better. Knees should be slightly bent, so your knees over the ball of your foot. Some people will tell you to stand on your toes or on the balls of your feet. That's really tiring. Maybe some people can do that. I'm pretty lazy. Right? You can get pretty much the same benefit by having your knees over the balls of your feet. You can do that same springiness without having to stand up. Right? Um, it also gives your legs a slight coil. If your legs past your knee, you lose mechanical advantage of your knee, so you can't push off these. If I'm way over here, for example, this is harder to extend from. So here it gets me a little less than a 90 degree, uh, like a 60. Um, so that's that. Of course, you should be straight. You never want to bend at the waist. Um, I should point out, when I say never, these are like the rules in writing, right? The great writer break the rules, right? But they break them because they understand the rule and they break it to accomplish a specific effect in their writing. Same thing with fighting. If you a whole bunch of rules, when you understand the rule well enough, you can break it on purpose. But you shouldn't break the rules accidentally. Right? And when you break it on purpose, you should know why you're breaking it. Oh, I've been at the waist because X. I've got the certain shot I throw it requires this, right? Uh, Shion probably will say a lot of stuff. It's very bad. Um, so, here's my foot and hand position, right? My feet are here, torso is straight, I am not squared up. Squaring up gives me no advantage, right? Because if I square up, all it's done is bring both shoulders in range. Um, so you want to be linearly behind your weapon, you got one thing to hide behind, right? You want your sword in your forward hand, and the reason for that is, now it is between you and the bad guy. If it's in my back hand, I have to twist to get it in front of me, and this squares me, also puts a little bit of load on my knee, right? and it's just not very comfortable, it's hard to move this position except to step forward, which is a cross step, which we'll talk about later. Um, so, sword in the forward hand, so you either want to switch feet or switch hands. This is really uncomfortable for me. It'll take a little practice, not a natural stance, there's nothing you do in your normal life that has you stand like this. Also, I was taught the other way. You were taught this way? Yeah. I was Let's taught shield life for uh, my training lies in theatrical Elizabethan rapier. Ah, we are not theatrically fighting. In fact, <laughs> you will discover you do martial arts. Some of the transfers, the movement, the kinetics, right? A lot of stuff doesn't. I used to fight with a guy who was a fifth degree black belt in kendo. I kicked the crap out of him because it fits with black belt and kendo and a newbie amped up. Rapier also has different goals and methods. You're not swinging rapiers as much, it's just the mechanics don't work. Um, work. Um, probably also a lot uh, is when the theatrical stuff is you're looking for that hand sweep on a strike, and that's that's a one one way ticket amped. You do that one time and then you're done. Um, and it's my hip movement as well, it's yeah. easier to use my hips the other way. Now, you did mention shield leg forward. Yeah. That is slightly different because if I have a sword, a shield, there are different stances, and this is acceptable because yeah. then I've got a shield here. Right? Oh, yeah. And there's different stances. But for single sword, you use a different stance, right? Okay. Different styles require different stances. Giant ass butterfly. <laughs> um, so, what I want to do with my hand, right? A lot of people have their hand here. My arm looks pretty available, doesn't it? Right? What you've got is you want your hand high. Right? And we're actually going to shortcut ahead a little bit to talk about. Um, lanes and, and the cone of defense. Right? In fighting, you have 
your weapon, right? At least for single sword, right? You're, you're, that defines a point in space. And then you can divide space around it into different areas, right? Different quadrants or what we call lanes. With my sword, I've got above it, the upper lane, I've got below it, the lower lane. I've got the inside, right? Inside to my body, the inside lane, I've got the outside, the outside lane. So if we're fighting now, I throw a shot here, this is the inside lane. This is the outside lane, this is the upper lane, this is the lower lane. So, um, so by bringing my hand up, right, what I'm doing is I'm denying the upper lane. I've also got it off-centered, if you look down so you can see my head, right? I've now got it, the line is here, my sword is to this side of my body. I'm also denying the outside <coughs> lane. The reason for that is, those are the two closest lanes, right? I'm putting my hand at their shoulder height, here, right? So I'm largely in the outside lane. My block is going to throw up my arm, right? In fact, you can even go for it. Right? Is the other again. Right? Notice how little my block is. It's a little clap in the elbow, a little roll in the hand, and that's it. Right? Now I should really be catching it my sword, not my gloves, but they're brand new gloves that are really well padded. Um, <laughs> so, but by, I'm denying that close lane, and the hip is also an easier block. Right? Yeah. Even if I swing at his body, his foot would dart here. Arms covered, body's too far away. Exactly. And that gets down to this, this cone, right? When I'm attacking, my shoulder is where everything's connected to my body, right? So if I can reach with the shoulder, right? Down my leg, notice it describes an arc. I am not in range of his leg without moving, whereas I am with the shoulder, right? So there's an arc here. To get lower targets, I have to get lower. So having my hand up here at his shoulder height, right? This is his maximum range point, right? So I'm blocking the maximum range point. If he wants to come and reach for back body over here, sorry, inside leg, right? That's a slower shot. He's come all the way around here. My back body's way back here, right? It's a slower shot. I have more time to react. So that's why I'm cutting that off as my secondary. Um, so that is a choice, though. He is choosing to block the easy lanes, make you work for hard lanes. You can make the choice to do other things, like leave easy lanes open to baits or whatever. Just know that that's what you're doing, but you know why you're there. Yes. Um, and that gets back to the idea of you're changing the rules, you should know why you're doing it, right? Here's my default. Why am I not doing the default? Because I'm baiting the arm. Right. So here is single sword stance. Right. Hand should be at shore level. So if I'm fighting this guy, go ahead and meet your chance. We're not going to fight, we're just going to square up, right? Now, don't move. Your hand is too low. When you're single sword, your hand's almost always too low. Right. Um, I spent a lot of time fighting with Spin, who is one of the original originators of good Florentine style. And I spent the entire summer him, because he wouldn't say it first. First he would crack me in the forearm as hard as he could, and then he would say, your hand too low. That was all summer. <coughs> your hand too low. I could have said that first. <laughs> no, I couldn't. <laughs> the other thing is, there's a slight bend in my arm, right? If you notice, I'm here, I've got a bend. And the reason for that is, if my arm's straight, I don't have, have uh, any defensive angle, right? My arm is, you know, a strat, flat shot in my hand and my arm. By having that angle here, first of all, my arm's coiled to throw. If it's straight, I have to come back to throw. You don't have to chamber to throw. You want to be in a position to throw. I'm in the bam, right? So, you want to have about a 140-degree uh, angle, 135, from where you're really precise, uh, angle in your arm, bam, right? And what that does is that puts my hand below. You also want to rotate your so now, you can also tip your sword towards them. That discourages people from closing. So now I'm like, ha, ah, my sword's in your face. Right, I'm gonna take my glove off so you can see the guard. So, here, right. Here's my guard, squared up against this guy. My hand's right about where his shoulder is. And now, if I want to throw a shot at his arm, see how, see how you just rotate in that block? Right. I'm gonna crack him in the hands. I do recommend gloves. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be hard for me to get that. If I want to get the body, right, if I want to go back to the body, I have to come all the way in here. Um, so that's actually a fair amount of single sword. Uh, let's do a quick run through everybody's single sword stance and then we'll move forward. Stuff, and then we'll actually break down and do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one and, and work through some shots and some, some kinesthetics and stuff. Um, so that's single sword. Florentine! Florentine is single sword. Yeah, I didn't. I've already got one hand here. Permanent. You've got an overly aggressive fighter.
Florentine. There's three styles of Florentine. Can I get one of your extras? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Glenn. You know, I'm sorry. I suck, and they got the van. That's fine. Most of you don't think it's left. It's fighting Florentine. Well, a lot of Florentine cover enough. You guys are going to have to share. So when we, when we start breaking up, oh, did we? You should work that I brought just enough swords for everyone. You're the man. All right. Don't break. Most of them are new. Um, all right. So this one's glittery. This is the one I'm using on all my demonstration subjects. If you see Anna, you'll notice she's glittering a lot. She was my first demonstration subject. Um, so Florentine. There's a lot of ways for Florentine. A lot of them are wrong. There's, three, there's two right, and then there's the wrong way. So there's, first of all, what I call Rogue 2.0. It's the most recent iteration of the rogue theory of Florentine. And it is, your stance is a lot like a single sword. Your, and you can do it either way, whichever is more comfortable. So you've got the same stance, front foot point at the bad guy, right foot, you give a little bit farther out, you can be a little more squared in the stance. Um, and you're actually gonna have a slight distribution of weight towards the front foot, maybe about 60-40 in this case, right? Because a little bit of leaning is okay. Um, it's, <laughs> like I said, we'll get to Peter 1.5. <laughs> so, um, but then the back legs hand is the forward hand. Hands are high, a lot like in, in single sword, because you're again, you're blocking lanes. And then the forward hand is just slightly behind, it's slightly below the other hand, so it's here. And what I'm doing here, and you have to avoid this, because as soon as someone does this, you put your sword in the middle of their sword so they can't do anything, and you stab them. Um, so that's, that's a risk. This takes a little bit of practice, but it's pretty effective. So, and the idea here is, you know, one of you can see the difference, right? They're not crossed this way, they're only crossed this way. So, when I'm straight up at you, this sword, each have their kind of their own lane here. If you can't do this, your swords are crossed. And then you just put them together, bloop, bloop. They want to be right here. Here. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a couple things. One, just like in the single sword, my hand is high, I'm cutting off that high lane, and I'm cutting <coughs> off the inside lane. The lanes that are effectively closer, right? Um, I'm doing this in part because I'm a lefty and this is the way I fight because almost everybody else is a righty and their sword is over there. Their primary hand sword, right? The scarier sword. Yeah. Right? So against a lefty, I will often switch up to here. Right? Um, but I have a lot less practice this way, so I always do that, which is a flaw in my fighting style. Um, but, so it's here. Also, I'm making stabs less inviting, right? If I'm here, this looks like, why don't you make a field goal and stab the crap out of me, right? <laughs> here, though, this looks like, what am I going to stab? Maybe my arm. But more likely, I'm going to clear it to the side, and then I've got this thing right here looking threatening. Right? So, it's a, you notice also I'm a little more square in the torso. This brings my shoulders forward. Um, one thing I found with this style, again, this hand a lot like a single sword stance. Elbows bent, hands low, but the arm looks available. People a lot of times cross with their right hand to this arm, which is an easy block. And you've got your good hand for hitting. A um, couple of stylistic considerations, Florentine. Um, when you're Florentine, you're at a disadvantage versus other Florentiners as far as skill. Not fighting them, but comparing a lefty Florentine as a right Florentine of the same skill level and the same relative disparity in hand skill levels, the righty has an advantage. Who knows why? Hand matching? Close. What's typically about hand matching? Uh, the right, if they're right hand and hand match, they're fighting the same amount of left and right. Um, well, imagine they're, you're fighting, they're both fighting a boardman, your standard boardman, because that's what you're going to run into most of the time. Oh, okay. it's, you're very rarely get lucky enough to fight a whole bunch of Florentiners or you're Florentine. Usually you're like, I'm the one Florentiner. Damn it. All right. And all the archers are like, suck it. <laughs> so, and the poles are like, that's our new friend. And like, fuck. So the thing, I, thing I'm doing is, uh, go ahead and grab your board. All right, while he's getting his board on. Which of these hands is I'm better at attacking with? The left. Right. Where's his strongest defense? Against my retarded hand. The retarded hand has to do the most work. The hand that's good at doing work has the weaker side. I've got an imbalance here, right? To get around that, I have to come up with a wrap or this, right? These are more complex motions, right? And these things take, or if I want to fake, come around, right? These are harder motions with your off hand. Your right hand's like, oh, I got this, right? Your off hand's like, what? Union break. Right? So <laughs> your primary hand is against their weaker, weaker defense. You've got overkill. You're killing, you know, a fly with a handgun. Over here, where the wolf's attacking, you've got the goddamn fly swatter. <laughs> so, as a lefty, to get good at Florentine, you got to make your offhand work a lot. Right? Whereas you see guys who are kind of Florentine-focused, um, Ark, good example. Lots of Florentine. 
His left hand's mediocre, but he kills everybody with it. Because all he has to do is be like, look at the right hand. I can throw something incredible over here. And they go, holy shit. He goes, whack. And they go, oh, your left hand works. He's like, marginally. <laughs> yeah. So that makes it harder because this hand isn't as useful. You have to train this hand up a lot. Now, the advantage of that is most of you fighting are righties. Righties are stupid. <laughs> so a lot of times you can do this. Eh, paw ineffectually at them with this hand. But they're so used to this hand being scary, they do something, and then you kill them with your good hand. All right? Um, I've got a number of Florentine kills by this. Let's go ahead and square up. And I throw here, and they block, and then I go stab, right? Because they go, you know, even really good fighters, right? I mean, you were clearly giving me a nice example. I appreciate that. But, like, in a tournament, they'll be like, ha! Well, that means stab me now, right? And I just went, ugh. I didn't commit to it. I don't want to throw somebody to commit. I'm not going to be like, Because now I've overcommitted, right? And this shot wasn't going to do anything anyway. I just have to make it look convincing. Right? I just have to wave it at him, hit him with the sword, something like that. Enough to get him to open to react to it. And then, yeah, and then this hand. Um, next is Peter 1.5, which I'll let one of the Peter's kids teach. So I'm not a Florentine fighter by nature, so... Um, Peter really loves the low, like, speed guard a lot. Um, he's only recently started evolving to the, the fading the cross and then tying your swords together a little more to work lines more efficiently. And so we, and this is still what I do, we, we split here. We go post a little, we rely on brushes for stabs, and then we really try and close the outside lines to work inside. Um, that works like fucking magic if nobody can stab, which is Belagarth most of it. Like, right? Those kids don't stab at all. They don't. Sure. And so this is overpowered. This right here is I win. Um, or even this, so you're not overcommitted and goal posting. Um, this tying thing up, Ark, you started working on it, I blame you. Um, this is not, it's not how we do it. So the concern is, of course, that it's really easy to clear both swords, it's really easy to untangle. Like, this has a much higher skill floor. Like, you, you, this is forgiving. Like, it's really hard. So you'd have to basically, like, throw two, two swords at once to put yourself in a super vulnerable position to just chill here. Yeah, that's actually an excellent point. There is a higher skill floor for the, the higher guard. Um, I actually, my Florentine was awful when I first started working in Florentine, so I went to spin. I just started from the ground up, and I was already a fairly accomplished fighter. So that's an excellent point that there's a certain amount of skill required to make this work. On the other hand, if you want to make Florentine your thing, you might as well start with a very high seat, because there's a very high seat. When I fight people with this style, especially when I first got good at it, I wasn't great by any margin. I was, by spins and standards, Vaguely competent in an embarrassing sort of way is what I guess he would describe it as. I don't know, but <laughs> probably less flattering than that, right? But it felt like easy. When I come up on people who were Florentine, I'd be like, are you ready? Okay, right? And then whack or whack, you know? And it was so easy because, one, they weren't used to it. And two, it's a, it's a, I think it's spear style, actually. Um, one of the things I've noticed Peter does is um, this stance, right? It's, it's both hands still over, clear to the side. Um, <coughs> We were talking about this, whichever one was in Utah. Was that last year or before? Year before. That was in Utah. It was this stance. And the idea is this arm, right, which makes sense. It's kind of your naturally defensive hand. Usually your off hand you do a lot more blocking with. This hand blocks. This hand attacks. That's wrong. Both hands should kill, right? But it takes advantage of that natural instinct, right? So if I'm fighting someone and I want to, say, stab them, I'm going to stab. Notice where the sword is. It's covering this arm, right? If he wants to throw out the arm, I've got to cover, right? If he decides, I'm going to go for his back body. Right? Well, here I'm gonna actually, if here, then he would have fucked up my stab and I would cover the guard. But if I'm stabbing and he clears the one sword, he goes, I'm gonna go back body in the inside lane. I'm, I just roll it out, block. And that's a slower shot, so I have time to do this. Right? The idea is this is covering, giving me cover when I extend this arm. Because as a Florentiner, you get in the arm a lot. Right? Because they're sticking out. Right? So if you want to get to Florentine, you have to be good at single sword. Right? And one of the things I really recommend for single sword practice, anytime you're in a single sword ditch, single sword practice, Switch, switch hands every round, or every two rounds, or every three rounds. But get that offhand in. You don't want to do all offhand ditching because it's really hard on your ego because you just get murdered over and over and over again. Yeah. As so, a lefty, I try to go righty when it's single sword to against the other righties, so it's yeah. like hand matching. I get beat a lot, but it's game. You know, you know. Yeah, it, it, it definitely gets you. I found that and it's just how <laughs> ego crushing it is using your offhand all the time. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, once you turn it offhand up, it can be really satisfying. No matter what you're fighting, at some point you lose your left arm. You're like, I can still kill two, three P before I go down with this offhand. Yeah. And that's really gratifying. So, it's definitely worthwhile to train up the offhand. Um, so, the, the wrong stance, 
this, right, which I know is kind of what you guys are doing, but usually they're, they're here, they're kind of back, right, and they're just ready over that staff, because you were a little more forward, you were here. Oh, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are just like, I'm ready. This is the, I want it, I, I forgot my shield stance. Yeah. yeah, and what it means to me is, whichever hand is facing this way is going to stab, so if we're squared up and we're both doing this, right, he's going to be like, this hand's going to stab you in the torso, and I'm like, this hand's going to stab you in the torso, and if we're really unlucky, we'll both blast each other at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that's that's kind of the Florentine style. So let's let's do a quick. So, so like the underlying theory, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. The reason this is better is this presents the most credible lines of threat for both swords. This is the this is getting the most mileage of the fact that you left your shield at home and agreeing to your swords. Right? Like this is you can hit every line from the waist up with both swords here. You know, you can get a lot of stuff. Um, everything further back from here. You know, it keeps your shores more separate, it's a little bit lower skill floor, but the, the further this is and the, from, from killing people, the less use you're getting out of it, and the more you should have just brought a shield. Yeah, that's excellent. I'm so glad you're my coworker. I want you next year. Um, so, um, any other questions about Florentine? Um, let's do a real quick run through. I don't want to spend too much time because so um, Plus, we all care about boards the most, right? Yeah. Yes. So, um, so, we'll move to downstairs next. Um, <laughs> so let's do a quick. Uh, so down spear is hard as a lefty. Um, it's fun to play with. I enjoy it a lot, but it's a lot of throwing leg shots or just throwing crap, and then they block it and you fill them with this. Stuff. All right. <laughs> let's talk about sword board. Sorry. You're fine. This is what we're here for. Exactly. Your learning is more important than this video, so. <laughs> Ray, I do not want the huge, gigantic thing on my shoe when I'm using it. Alright, let's see what everybody's got for... I don't want that experience. ...their sword and board stance. I don't need that let's in my life. Let's just start there. And then I'll tell you how you're all wrong. <laughs> and then he'll disagree with me, and then we'll fight about it. <laughs> this one I actually know. Just all the things I keep telling Peter he's doing. Oops, my Alright. So, I will be your imaginary person who may all square off against one. So let's see what you got here. We've got a sword forward, sword foot forward. We've got a squared sword forward, shield forward. You guys are all like coordinated, so it's, it's a <laughs> gradual change. Well done, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's look at the various styles we've got going on. First of all, we have shield leg forward, which is kind of my default, right? Um, and it's the best one. No, there, there is no best one. Um, also, some people call one defensive, one offensive. That's crap. <laughs> Whether you're offensive or not comes from your style and your attack choices and your strategic choices. There's nothing about style that makes them more effective. Um, so in any case, with sword and board, I should turn this way so you can see it. So you're like, now you can see nothing. Uh, a couple things sword and board. Righties, you will generally discover, have their hand higher. When you're fighting lefties, that becomes useful because if I'm fighting another lefty, not too worried about shots coming over here, all right? That's more fancy. Most of the shots are high, which is why righties have their hand higher. They're looking for that cross they're blocking, right? You could take advantage of that because lefties should not have their hands that high. Because if my hand's up here, what can you see? Oh, oh, okay. And forearm. And, and if you're sword like the you get hit in the Yeah. You should you should not overlook the fact that if you take your sword arm, they're screwed. Right? I a lot of times I don't worry about body, I can take your sword arm, I win, game's over. Right. So you want that hand down, right? A lot of times your hand is too high. It's the opposite of single sword. Your hand's too low, now it's too high. Um, you want to get squared up behind the board? You don't want to rest the board against your face, especially if you're a dag or a bell, because someone will kick it and hurt your face. Now, with that set, you can have it sort of in front of your face. My sword shields about here, right? Braced by my shoulder, my face being back away. So if they kick it, it kicks into my shoulder, right? In amp cars, no one should be kicking. <laughs> but it gives me that protection. I've kicked a number of times, usually when I'm leg, right? Um, and it's just like, ugh, what? Right. Well, once this Beauregard is huge, he actually pushed me over. And I stabbed him in the dick, so it was fair change. <laughs> um, he's a good guy. So, um, in any case, here's my stance. Again, it's a lot like the single sword we talked about. And the fact that my forward foot pointing at the bad guy, right foot can be at 45 or 90. Um, should be a little bit off-center. 
Um, again, that's due to your motion, right? You should be able to move in any direction. It becomes more important in bell or dagger, people are going to come and try and shove you over. Yep. If you're really linear, it's easy to get pushed over this way, right? And that becomes a big issue. Um, part of that, you can play a pretty aggressive style. Contact oriented. Less than, less than so. Um, I would, I would say that like, mobility is still much more important than stability. If you, if you can move and close and then control range, then they can try and shove you over. They're going to be dead before they come. So I don't, I don't favor like the brick wall, like strong shit stands. Like I don't, I don't. <laughs> it's not valuable in this game to me. Yeah, I feel kind of sad. So um, your board, a lot of people's board is too low. If I can see your shoulder, I can hit it. If I can't see it, I may be able to hit it too, but if I can see it, I can definitely hit it. And a lot of people are like, well, I'll just bring my board up when you throw for it. That's a terrible idea, because then I'm going to fake at it. Well, yeah, then there's also specialty <laughs> ones. But more importantly, I'm going to fake at it, you're going to bring your board up, and then I'm going to hit you in the hip. Right? And that means you have the reverse motion of your board, your arm. Right? This is a slow reaction motion. Right? It's a complex motion, it's not as quick to do. You don't want to be going, oh, oh, because you probably got hit, because I went, ha, ha. Right? This is faster than this, So in those cases. So you want the board up, covering the shoulder. Um, other comments on stance? Well, on this one? Yeah. You don't like it. You don't like it. All right. That's fair. It's not everybody's favorite stance. It's about half and half. Um, I will argue that the one thing I do find super valuable about it is that it gives you a really mean passing step. The, the leaf special, where you start like this, you get one passing step and you are in their grill. Still have a strong defense and you are presenting just all kinds of threat. And so I would say that's the one most valuable thing for me. She'll put forward is you're, you're denying and refusing sword interaction. They can't fake your sword out of the way because it's back here, like you're safe. And then you get one passing step to go. And that's, that's all I need. Honestly, I kind of want to second that because honestly, most of my tactics in DAG as a sword order is here, wait for it. So, especially as a lefty getting the wrap. <laughs> I think as you, as you fight, higher level fighters, you'll find that it, being able to engage and, and sort of have the conversation with them has more value as you learn how to do it more and more. Um, the refusal is strictly sort of a gimmick in my opinion, but it is a, an effective one at times. Yeah, um, that's a good point. You don't ever want to be a one-trick pony because once that trick stops working, you're in trouble. And against good fighters, it'll work once, if that. Right? And they'll be like, oh, and then they'll start abusing your one-trick. They'll be like, oh, you're going to refuse a step. Fake block kill. Things like that. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, as you're coming up, you have to start somewhere. Right? So I don't want to say, well, don't do that. Right? No. Don't do that only. Um, other one is sword leg forward. Um, there's a couple variations. My stance, stance is almost a Florentine stance. It's here. Right? I've got my sword leg forward. I've got my shield leg back. My shield is actually back. It's almost a Florentine stance for me. This has the advantage of this shoulder's really safe. It's back, so I've got distance helping me. And it's behind my sword, or behind my shield, rather, right? You really got to work to get this. On the other hand, it's really embarrassing when I hit it. Um, on the other hand, this side is much more vulnerable, right? I need to do a lot more sword fighting. It's almost single sword now, right? Because I've got to do a lot of blocking with my sword and attacking with my sword. And this is what the aim here and sort of the other roads teach. You basically turn it into single sword all over again. And my objection to that, the reason I don't do that, is I feel like you're giving up synergies to the board. You've simplified instead of making it more complex for the person. Um, also, I want to touch something you mentioned earlier in a different area, but it's worth repeating. Sword blocks sword side. Shield blocks shield side. The first time you do this to block, you lose. My sword can't do anything. This shoulder's now vulnerable. Even if I block it, I gain nothing. Abusing that tendency will let intermediate and beginner lefties walk through entire events. I have killed 26 people in a row with that exact, like, oh, like, now you turn the shoulder. Like, 26 in a row. Um, that's part of why lefties stay back. It's the stupid shit like that works for fighters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't cross me. Do it as a lefty, abuse the people, abuse the stuff. Yeah, and that's, that actually is another point that I kind of want to touch on. Um, it's easy to get to the point where you're effective as a lefty. Don't mistake that for good, right? Because righties are stupid, right? And there's all sorts of basic stuff you will work on them over and over and over again, and you'll never get better. And then you'll run into one of the warlords out here or somebody in Texas that has a lot of good lefties <laughs> around them, and they'll be like, seen that, psh, seen that, psh, right? And they'll just murderize you, and you'll be like, I thought I was good. No, you were effective. Difference. And the way you get around that is don't crutch on shots, right? If the faking them out so they move their shit over and stuff works, 
don't do that all the time. Do it enough, you keep good at it, right? Don't never do it. But you're like, all right, I've learned how to do that. Let me find a new way to kill them. You have to keep challenging yourself if you want to get good. If you don't challenge yourself, you're going to be effective and not good. Um, and I can't stress that enough. Like, I, I really plateaued because I found three shots that work and just get them for years. Um, final stance is the square stance. There is exactly one time this is useful. That's when you've legged the other guy and you're trying to Oops. get him to throw anything because he's got to keep shield he's laying on. It. I mean, I'll do this against someone leg. I'll step in because I want them to throw and I've squared up on their sword. And I'm now going to be able to block it and I want to get the move. So I'm like, hey. All right. Let's move inside. I'm down. All right. You got that? I got it. So he's legged, right? I'm here or here, either way, right? But I'm going to close in here, right? And notice where my sword went to, right? I didn't stay in a square stance here because I leave my leg open. I came forward to jam out. Right? My sword's tipped, so he can't I can't block it. And yeah, even he goes for a leg, right? Yeah, then I just win, right? And usually they're aware of that, and they're you know. And so I can come in, go ha! I can see my body, I'm a block, and I'm a throw, right? Or I might even dark side if you can't see, but we'll talk about. Um, but that's the only time I swear. It's the only time. Yeah. So because otherwise. This got me nothing. Right? I put both legs in front. My coming forward is a step of some sort, which exposes hip or exposes hip. Right? There, it's just it's, it's <laughs> awesome. I've seen a couple people do it with some effectiveness, but I think that's because they're just good enough to do it doing dumb shit. Um, and I think it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there's only like limited value in showing people stuff they haven't seen before. Like, yeah. You no, know, somebody's never fought a square stance confident fighter. Maybe you get something out of that. Yeah. But yeah, there's a good chance that going to work out. So um, let's do some quick looks at stances. Um, and then, uh, since you're a sword leg forward guy, sword leg forward people over there, shield leg forward people over here. If you're a middle stance, pick up. A lot of people are like, well, how do warlords win? They do the basics really, really well. There's no warlord secret secret against a warlord secret. It's practice. Right? But there's no warlord secret shot, right? It's like, I got my warlord, and finally Jillian Terrace broke down. They're like, all right, like, come on. We gotta tell you something. And I was like, oh, geez, that's it? And then it was a warlord. No, I yeah. cracked my ass off. I fought, four, five, one, two. Yes. I fought four or five times a week for several years against top fighters, and eventually it's good enough that I can beat them. That's it. So let me get my guest righty. And since you're over here, this will work out well. We're gonna stand here, and we're gonna start on the most basic shot, which is what do you guys think of the first lefty shot is? Either yeah. this hip hip or this straight. Hip. Hip wrap. Hip wrap. Yep, that's where we start. Hip wrap. The most basic shot. There's a lot of ways to throw a wrap. We're going to show what, throw what I consider kind of standard wrap. And it is a hand. Yes, it's standard hand. Um, first thing I mentioned is grips. Don't have the grips. So this is something that's very important. You don't want to fight like this. If your thumb is up like this, at some point, somebody stronger than you or just meaner than you or you get unlucky and find somebody weaker than you who's lucky. Um, and they'll strain back. That tears these tendons here. It's about two or three months of rehab time. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, so what you want is, you notice there's this line here, which is your lifeline, or your love line, whatever. Um, and you put your sword across that, and you throw your fingers up. It's also what's called... It's a modification of a French grip, if you're fencing. The French grip has a slight curve in it, makes it easier to make more natural hold to fight. But you notice, my thumb is so short, my thumb is here. My thumb is not up, where it has no support, my thumb is creased. So when you press it, you're pressing it with my whole hand. This finger is up a little bit, here's down. This is kind of the extreme hand, because I fought French grip. Um, but that's basically your stance. You never hits. So the way you know you're doing it right, one of the really not terribly wrong is your index finger and your thumb, you pinch it like that, they should be about the same height. If one is higher than the other, reset. Take a second, reset. Yeah, so here. And then throw a finger down. And it, it goes it's a bag on my hand. It's going from one corner to the other. It's not straight down. You can fist grip if you want for some shots, but this is a little bit less control. Um, women's hands, some of them are built really different, so this works out better for some women. Yeah. Because it's actually, when I hold my sword like this, when I'll just hold your sword out like you're attacking. Right? Is that natural or is it more natural for it to lag forward? It's lag forward. See? That's your hand's slowly different shape. you got to slightly curve in your yeah. Yeah. Um, But for most guys, this is your stance. I'm going to control here. This is, this is most of this. Nice. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> and you'll notice this thing. naturally turns your hand out a little bit. You'll see some dad fighters who've watched like the Amy of the Rose crank their wrists out because that's what they think they see like Peter doing. This naturally turns your hand out a little bit. Right? And that gives you that like, forearm block that you want. Right? Naturally. Naturally. Without cra if you're cranking your wrist out and stressing your wrist to do it, do it wrong. Take a second reset. And again, that idea mentioned earlier of getting perpendicular to the block, 90 degree angle, right? Your block should never be this, right? If someone's pressing it, they should be pressing it this way. I have no strength to it. I have a lot of strength this way, right? You can block some guy with a red who's got a bad attitude with this. You can't block with this. Right? I've blocked a lot of red this morning, except it's like, ha! Right? Notice it's pressing it, not this. This, right? Think about doing military press. So, anyway, back to shots. So first is the hip wrap. Hand starts out. At an angle where the palm is pointing straight across, parallel to the ground, I'm going to come in. As I start to step forward, I'm going to shift my weight a little bit. I'm going to push off here. All power comes from the ground. If you're a guy, if you're a big guy, you need a little bad body kick. Just be like, all right, just a little bit over there, all right? Women can't do that. Your guys can't do that. And it's not so great for your body, all right? It's much better to use all your muscles. Older guys don't like to win. Yeah, it's just it's a terrible idea. So, prop right against the way to go. So, putting you off the ground, all the power comes from the earth. Like, we got off of this. Um, so, but I'm gonna, that point, power is coming from the shot. So, I come here, I load, right? So, I start to rock forward, and this little hip top action here, right? My hand comes here, my hand will come to a 45 degree angle up, right? My palm is now pointing here, right? It will come forward, it'll get to about a 45 degree angle forward, or 135 of this from my hand, right? 45 off 90. So here, and then I will roll my hand, like I'm turning a screwdriver, right? Not this, but a screwdriver. And it rotates from that snap. Bam. So that's the basic lefty shot. Right? You do not want to come back when you turn my shot the same way you're going to go. Why? Because I know it's sorting over here, right? Because my sword just swept through. This space I know is safe. No sense checking it again, right? So when I throw that shot, Right? Notice I'm a throw, I relax, and I come through, I reach the inside length. So if I throw, he counters, right? There, he missed this, right? But bam, I counter, bam, I counter. I'm trying to come back to inside length. Bam, I counter, right? And I slip through. Um, okay, it my but the case is, I throw, I come back. I throw, I'm coming back, reach the inside length. So he counters the outside. Lefty should love guys throwing on the outside. You want to get stuck up. Hold on, guys. So, that's me, because I like hitting people. <laughs> it's fun to hit the right. Um, question? What if you throw it by stepping forward to the side and then throw That's That's fine. That's a straight up shot. We'll remember that when we add it. Oh, okay. Movement. I didn't. Okay. But yeah. This assumes you've gotten the range already. You're somehow ready. Okay. Right. So, we're just looking at static shots. That was just something I had recently done this for you, Warren, so. Well, realistically, if you achieve this shot, you're going to have to do something like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're, you're short, you have less reach. I can all do it with donuts and hang out in my ring. Like, hey! Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Next I shot. just learned it at Springboard from a Iolus. Iolus? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a lefty. He's pretty good. He's more, new, one of our newer warlords. He's had it longer than me, that's why he's called me new warlord. <laughs> um, so, next shot is the slot. Anytime your swords are selling is there. Bam, right? Notice where my hand came to, right? Everything in fighting is about angles. If my hand is below his sword, I can't, you know, below his shield edge, or basically on the inside of the circle, I can't hit him. Go ahead and leave your shoulder wide open. Did I hit it? Why? Because my hand's inside, right? Go ahead and give it a good cover. Hit it, because my hand's outside the shield edge, right? When I want to throw a high shot, my hand's up, right? Um, Let's try to find the wound fighting class, and it doesn't do the shot, and it's this. Why? Because I'm like a foot taller. <laughs> yeah. But the shot, this looks yeah. really open when I do it, but when Anna does it, <laughs> it's not really open. Right? So um, the point of that is that your hand is clogging the lane of the hand. Yes. That's what, he, that's what he's talking about. A, so you feel it, and then B, so you show and yeah. stick it, and then you it. So what's the here? It may be there, for sure. You're going to have to cheat your shield over, that's bad, but sometimes you do try to get away. And I would actually say in this case, the brain shit over isn't a problem because this sh shoulder comes over my sword. Here, if he wants to get to my sword, he has to come up and over this hand. In which case, I'll just do this, right? Oh, he'll go, oh, and I'll go, no. He might hit him in the head on the way out. Or I'll just bring my board back. But it's slow enough, I have plenty of time. My default is covered, and I can just roll it back up. 
Because the most likely turn is my hand. Um, the other thing, as he mentioned, it does clog that lane. If he's, if he's got his guard out and I throw, my return to guard, again, I'm not just going to straight back. I'm going to go down and back because that's what's like to return. You always want to return to the most likely response they're going to throw. So you're in position to block. That's why I like looking good players are fast. Like, oh, he's so fast. No, he started that block before you started your attack. Okay. He was a step ahead of you. He was on page two, you're on page one. That's why he changed the book first. Um, Okay, um, next one, the high cross. I'll be like, high cross is a terrible shot. They don't complete the sentence. The high shot, the high cross is a terrible shot as an opener. You don't just walk up to someone and be like, right? You don't just walk and be like, hi. Right? Because look what just happened. Right? It's a terrible shot to open with because it's it's slow. He's got all the time to roll to read this. Right? He's got an arm to choose from. He can throw a really safe shot just by doing this. Boop, bip, and just put me mark, bam, or he's this way, keep me in the wrist. He's got so many choices. He might have so many choices he doesn't get me because he's thinking about me. <laughs> I don't want to help my hope on that one, right? So, the high cross, however, can you get over if he gets stuff out of position, though, right? Maybe I fake here, right? And he goes, halt, and that's high cross, right? So, if you can set it up, high cross is great. If they open it up, high cross is great. Keep it in your toolbox, don't open it. Alright, so also let me, let me fix the terminology, I'm going to shove some nodes in here against you real okay. um, This is a crossing flat round, right? Even when you throw it, you're not like winging your elbow up here and high, high. The flat wrap, that same motion, is to the, to the shoulder, right? Sink the hips or whatever, get him to drop it, to the shoulder. It's not two, right? This is never a good shot, this is sometimes. Sometimes I would say never, yeah, I would say rarely. I would say that. I run battle guards, I'm the answer here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. It depends how close you get to your opponent. Yeah. The uh, closer you get, the higher you gotta go. Yeah. Sometimes I get it like over like that. And I almost feel like that's the bowling, shot. But the bowling sweep too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a shot that I invented that Wilhelm's never heard of when he walked by like this. So you'll hit him in the face. That <laughs> Wilhelm's <laughs> modification. I hit him in the course. Oh. <laughs> no, that's Wilhelm. Yeah. So that, that uh, same part <laughs> mechanic just cross by. Yeah, you have to be more important than him and a little more flexible because I hit him in the face. But Wilhelm does it very well. And it looks badass. You walk by and be like, you're dead, I just walked by. I call people do it very well. Yeah. So, so in any case, that's not one of our fun little things. The final shot is more complex, but it's it's important because when we're fighting, what have we done so far? We've threatened this side. We haven't done anything over the past over here to the cross. But we haven't done a lot of there's no threats in this area, right? We haven't really made him think too much of the side. Just thinking about this part of his body, this little arc, right? Well, I want him to think about everything. Because otherwise, I still find his public space. You want your opponent's problem to be as complex as possible. So that's where the dark side comes in. I love this shot. And righties, you should learn this because it wants to be better for righties. Because for lefties, it should be harder. In fact, step a little farther away from the water, right? Now close your eyes and don't open your mouth. Okay. What happens? Nothing. Right. Because if they doze off while you're fighting, you can't hit them with the dark side. The dark side relies on doing something stupid. Luckily, righties are stupid. <laughs> so, what you're going to do is when you throw the shot, right, the shot comes down, you don't try to hit them, but it comes down here. And people go, shit, there's a threat over here. And the shit moves over. And then your sword comes over, you're stepping a little bit, sinking, hand straight down, palm is on the front, pointing across. Then you come across, palm comes to up. Right? Sort of across the body, you got a slight bend in it. Then you got two choices, right? You can rotate into a shoulder chop, which is hilarious when they're taller than you. <laughs> or you can, if you notice that with pump up, right? Bam, right? Or you can come back and then snap forward as a pump up motion, and it's, it's this, right? Notice how my elbow's involved in this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's elbow and shoulders, so that's part of it. Power comes my wrists. My wrists are not that strong. They're amazingly handsome and sexy, but not that strong. So my power comes this, right? Notice there's also a little bit of hip wiggle in there, because my power again comes from the earth, right? Bam! That's where my power comes from. Good solid shot. Take my shot. Right? Back to the dark side. What that does is it complicates the problem space. It's not a great shot, right? Like I said, if he doesn't pay attention, his eyes were closed and I couldn't hit it. Generally, that's sign of a bad shot. You can throw another lucky shot. What's that? It's good to know that because you can throw it against another lucky shot. Yeah, because okay. like, and a lot of times we're fighting somebody and their shit will move over here, right? So like, we're fighting, we're fighting, now I can hit him. As soon as he did what he did right there, I can hit him. And I do it all the time to people because 
they get their shit over here, and then bam, that's on you. So be aware of the post-period. So I will say, that's my personal plateau right now. It's like, again, good part is you learn to work this, you learn to work this, and you're both good, and I, nobody's doing dumb shit. And then they realize you do not have a criminal code over here. And Jamie does this to me 20 times out of 20. And then he's like, good, good, good. And then they clog the sword lane, and they have simplified their problem space to zero. Because you do not have a credible threat over there. So that is it's a wonky ass shot, and I hate that I need it, but I really need it. And there's there's other things you can throw. You can throw a variation of Peter's money, or uh, least money shot. You can step, it's, I don't throw it, so I don't have it put in my toolbox, but you threaten this side, and then it's here. Alright? Bam! Uh, I think I should take the leg, because I don't, yeah, I don't have a lot of practice that shot. And that shot is all set up by a tip right?